Personal protective equipment, or PPE as we now know it, is in high demand the world over due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So what is it exactly? Our reporter Ruth Hill and cameraman Dom Thomas went along to Hutt Hospital today to see PPE in action. So I'm going to get you to put a hat on first because that's the first line and make sure that your hair's all tucked in. I took my earrings off, um, I have took my pager and everything off and left them outside of there and I have nothing below the arms. So the next thing we're going to do is put shoe covers on and that's just to make sure that when you leave the room... That's Susan Cartmill, clinical nurse manager here at Hutt Hospital's intensive care unit. We're in the donning room, a tiny claustrophobic cell with a sink and rubbish bin next to the negative high pressure room where a stand-in for a critically ill, highly infectious patient is awaiting our care. As Mrs Cartmill explains, there is a very specific order for putting on PPE and taking it off again, a process known as donning and doffing. It sounds a bit like I should be popping on a top hat and kid gloves, but this is cutting-edge technology. So with the gun, we're going to bring it out and open it to yourself. So I slide one arm in. And you need to leave your cough. After covering my hair and shoes, there's a gown in a fetching hue of yellow, then the mask, shaped a bit like a beak, which must be completely sealed around the nose and mouth, and then a visor or mask to stop droplets spraying on my eyes. Gloves go on last. Oh, and in between each step, we have to wash and dry our hands. Once fully garbed, it's really hot, and I'm just standing here. Mrs Cartmill says apart from the mask, this PPE is standard issue for intensive care staff looking after patients with infectious diseases. We're just having to make sure that people get lots of breaks because you can get over hot, heated and you can get dehydrated. So it's not changing how we nurse, uh, it's just changing that how many people will require us to wear this PPE gear. ICU Director Andrew Stapleton says the Hutt Hospital has had this training unit set up for a week and is cycling through staff from different departments who may be needed in intensive care. So there's a bit of nervous anticipation, I suppose, uh, wondering what's going to occur. Uh, we're still, of course, hoping that we won't need any of this preparation, but we must plan for the worst, which is what we're doing. We're now in the room with the patient, a creepily realistic dummy that breathes and can groan and scream and have seizures. Its oxygen levels start dropping and Mrs Cartmill hits the emergency alarm. That's quite an ominous sound if you work in an intensive care unit and this will get a, a very quick response of everyone we need. There's a flurry of activity on the other side of the glass wall with doctors and nurses gathered around a trolley. They have to make sure they have everything they need because once they're in the room, they can't duck out again if they forget something. That process takes about four and a half minutes. Next, the doctor and nurse go into the donning room to put on the PPE, all the while talking through the intercom with the nurse, who's setting up the ventilator and reassuring the patient. Although our dummy is staying nice and still, a real patient will be feeling very anxious. They'll be breathing quickly. Sometimes they get confused and start to thrash around the bed and the stress level in the room can be quite high. Ten minutes after the alarm has sounded, a doctor and nurse assistant enter with intubation equipment. Dr Stapleton says the most dangerous time for clinical staff is when they're putting the breathing tube in. So we're cutting the mask off and carefully putting it in the bin. Normally we'd just pull them off, that wouldn't be a problem. We don't want COVID um, particles to be flying up into the air around. Dr Stapleton, who's also the chair of the New Zealand Committee for the College of Intensive Care Medicine, helped develop these protocols, which have now been adopted internationally. The doctor turns off the oxygen and uses a special scope with a video camera on it to guide the tubing past the vocal cords. Once it's in, the breathing tube goes on top and the patient is breathing through the machine. So we're desperately waiting to see the, the white line at the bottom, which is a trace of CO2, carbon dioxide. That is the only way you can be 100% sure that you've put the tube in the right place. Finally, the little white line measuring CO2 levels starts to form little peaks at regular intervals, and the patient is in a drug-induced coma. Then it's time to traipse through to the doffing room and take off our PPE. This is an even trickier process because it's now covered in virus and has to be peeled off in the right order so no part of my skin or clothing comes into contact with the outside of the gear. Dr Stapleton says in exceptional circumstances, the hospital might be able to increase the number of ventilated patients from 2 to 15 for short periods, but they hope they don't have to. For Checkpoint, Ruth Hill.